Roy Harper's morning walk from his Manchester, Tennessee front porch to a backyard shed just a few hundred feet away looks like a short and easy trip. But inside that shed and inside that case, the true travel time comes to light. Here, the calendar turns back to 1929. Where a one-time railroad brakeman turned country music singer helped yodel the country through bleak times. The brakeman and musician was Jimmy Rogers. Of course, Jimmy Rogers influenced more people than any country uh, entertainer that's ever been in the business. Roy Harper knows that's true, and he still can't stop singing about it. Well, I never knew that the place I grew was the grandest place on earth. Till I roamed around from town to town, I know what it's worth. Listen while I tell you about the place I mean. Oh, that's a little old home down in New Orleans. Oh, lady, oh, lady, oh, lady. I've always liked it. Every time I sing it, the memories go thick. The scenes start floating in my brain of the scenes and things that happened in New Orleans. And Where the white cotton girl is calling out to me. And soon I'll be in the land of my dreams. That's the little home down in New Orleans. Oh, lady, oh, lady, oh, lady. Roy Harper's been smiling and singing those songs since 1945. When I was uh, 20 years old. Out on the road playing shows with his Nashville Boys Band. If I got a big audience and get a standing ovation, that boy, that's like a shot in the arm. <laughs> Making waves in the music world with that classic Martin guitar. I give $90 for it in, in a pawn shop in St. Louis. And I got broke about two years later and sold for $35. And the Martin people told me that that guitar would be worth $11,500 now. Hardly a week goes by that it don't cross my mind. And, and so that's one mistake I made. <laughs> His talent got him an audition for the Grand Ole Opry. He said, you go and practice real good on about a couple, three real good numbers and come back in about two weeks. The railroad called me back. <laughs> the Burlington train line had a job for him too, and Roy didn't know what to do. Man, are you crazy? And that uh, grand old whopper, that bunch of roughnecks down there said, Dad, you stay at the railroad, and you know you're going to get you a pension one of these days with them. Said, you might not last on the opera for a year or two. So I tossed it back and forth, flipped a coin, and I went back to the railroad. <laughs> the clickety clack of the railroad track became part of his everyday work life. Perfect, considering the sound of that lonesome locomotive whistle had so grabbed him as a boy. A steam locomotive, the, the, the mournful whistle of them things, affected more people than anything that mankind has ever invented. And it affected me, and I told my mama, I said, I, that's an awful sad sound. She said, oh, it makes me sad too. I said, I wish I could ride on one of them. And, Ride he did from town to town for years as a brakeman, just like his singing hero, Jimmy Rogers. The brakemen wore the white caps because they could, everything was hand signals back then. You could take that thing off and way back down there, you could start giving signals with it, and you could see that white cap. The railroading was a, one more heck of a life, boy, I'll tell you. Roy's 86 now, and you'd think those trains would have left his station, but it's not so. Well, I guess I better put some smoke coming out on here. I can't work on them anymore. That's all, that's all history. Uh -huh. But I can relive the past with this paintbrush. A dab here and a spot there, and Roy's riding the rails again, 
oil paint and memories now keep him from ever waiting for a train. For I'm a thousand miles away from home just waiting for a train. He paints 15 train scenes a year and has kept that pace for the past 25 years. If I can get this right, I think I'll have, I think I'll have a pretty fair picture. It's a sure way to unwind from the road, a road that his musical tours still have him on. The trains may no longer take him there, but they're always part of the show. It's not all glamorous. At 86, Roy considers retirement, but realizes his train can't pull into that station yet. It's a kind of a necessity. If it wasn't for my picking and painting, I'd be hurting financially. I haven't got a nickel. Not a penny can I show. So he'll stay with it, singing and painting the train life he lived, where hobos, dining cars, and destinations were king. So my pocket book is my heart is full of pain, for I'm a thousand miles away from home just waiting for a train. I'm waiting for a train, 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 I'm